Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation problem. We have x to the fourth equals 3x plus 2, and we're going to be evaluating x squared minus x. But what does the second expression depend on? The first one, right? So based on the values we get from the first equation, we're going to evaluate the second equation. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. In other words, we're looking for a numerical value for x squared minus x. All right, so I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm gonna to attempt to solve this quartic equation. Quartic equations are not that easy to solve except for you know special cases. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. Now, quartic equations, Obviously, you can use the quartic formula, but that's super complicated. Nobody wants to use that, right? You can look it up on Wikipedia if you're curious. You'd rather not. But anyways, uh, since this is a competition-level problem, or maybe a real competition problem, I can't remember exactly. It probably is. No, actually, I came up with this idea. Anyways, never mind. It's a homemade problem that could uh, appear on a math contest. Uh, so... We're looking for special cases, so it's gonna work. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to factor this, uh, given the fact that we don't have any x cubed. That's a good thing. And we don't even have x squared, so that makes it even easier. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and set this equal to the following. x squared plus ax plus b, that's my first quadratic. And my second quadratic should be written in such a way that I need to get rid of x cubed, and that can be done by using x squared minus ax, with x squared plus ax because when you distribute you get minus ax cubed and plus ax cubed the only way for x cubed to cancel out does that make sense so that's why we need this type of structure but not only that to get the constant term we need to multiply b by let's just say c right but bc is supposed to be negative 2 which means i can replace c with negative 2 divided by b because if you think about it b multiplied by negative 2 over b is actually negative 2 isn't that cool so we eliminate the number of variables. So we want to get as low as possible, okay? The minimum number possible. In this case, there's only two A and B. So we should be able to solve for A and B, right? Let's go ahead and distribute. Now, let me tell you, when you distribute and simplify this, to keep a long story short, you're going to get something like this. X to the fourth plus B minus two over B minus A squared. That's going to be the coefficient of X squared minus the coefficient of x is going to be a b plus 2a over b and then finally we're going to get minus 2 and this is supposed to equal x to the fourth minus 3x minus 2. So we're going to be comparing the coefficients, right? x to the fourth matches up with x to the fourth, that's good. And then coefficient of x squared, uh-oh, we don't have any x squared. Houston, we have a problem. Actually, we have a solution too. It's supposed to be 0 because there's no x squared on the right-hand side. What about x? Well, the coefficient of x is negative 3. If you consider the negative sign here, this should be a positive 3. So, this gives us a system of equations. Let's go ahead and write it down. b minus 2 over b minus a squared is equal to 0. And ab plus 2a over b is equal to 3. Awesome. This is a system of equations. How do you solve it? That's a good question. It's actually a million dollar question. But one thing you can do is make a common denominator. B squared minus 2 divided by B is equal to A squared. Isolate A squared. And from here, you kind of get A squared equals something in terms of B, which is kind of nice. And from the second one, you can make a common denominator and then cross multiply and get something like this. And then factor out an A and isolate. Oops, that's not a minus sign. You can isolate a from here and write it as 3b over b squared plus 2. So we have two equations and two unknowns. So we should, be able to we should be able to solve it, right? Well, yes and no. Now, one thing you can do is replace this a here with this. So that gives you b squared minus 2 all over b equals a squared, which is 3b divided by b squared plus 2 quantity squared. Awesome. Well, not so awesome because this turns into a hexic equation. Not hectic, but hexic, which is a sixth degree, right? That's complicated. There is no formula. There's not even a quintic formula. I know some people are going to say, oh, we can use blah, blah, radicals. To no. Just accept the fact, guys. It's not too hard. 
there is no quintic formula. But anyways, our hexic is going to look like this. b to the 6 plus 2b to the 4th after simplifying all that stuff. So I did that work for you. And you should be getting something like this, if I'm not mistaken. Now, you're probably stuck, right? You can guess and check. Use the rational root theorem or possibly use Wolfram Alpha for a way to factor this. But let me tell you something. There are two things that you should always, always check with polynomial equations, regardless of the degree. Those are, one, check the sum of the coefficients. If the sum of the coefficients is zero, then one is a solution, like b equals one in this case, right? That's our variable. If the sum of the even coefficients are equal to the sum of the odds, which I'll make clear in a little bit, then negative one is a solution. What does that mean? First, check the sum of the coefficients. One plus two minus nine minus four minus eight. This is a three, negative six, negative 10, negative 18. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, let's check the second thing. The sum of the evens and odds. What do I mean by evens? The coefficient of even powers of b. For example, one b to the six. So we have evens and odds. Let's go ahead and make two groups. So I have in evens, I have the one, and then I have the two, and then I have the negative four, and I have the negative eight. Why do I have to include negative eight? Because it's negative eight, b to the power zero, and zero is an even number. Did you not know that? Oh, come on, you knew that, right? Yes, I mean, zero is even because it's between two odd numbers, but you also know it's divisible by two, right? And by the way, if you, Find, uh, evaluate zero to the power zero, it's one, but that's a different story. I know some people don't agree, but that's okay. I made a video about it. Hopefully you'll agree with me. Anyway, so those are evens and odds are not that many. Actually, there's only one, <laughs> negative nine. Great. So this is gonna be like one plus two is three, three minus four is negative one, negative one minus negative eight, negative one minus eight is negative nine, negative nine versus negative nine. Yes, Houston, we have a solution. Awesome, which means b equals negative one is a solution. Now, why is this a good thing? Well, it allows you, I mean, it gives you a solution that hopefully you can solve for a, but is there any guarantee that a is gonna be a good solution? Well, let's find out. What is a? 3b divided by b squared plus two. If b is negative one, you're gonna get negative three divided by three, which is negative one. So if b is negative one, a is negative one. Negative one comma negative one. Isn't that cool? Okay, great, but wait a minute. Is b equals negative one the only solution? Probably not, right? So let's go ahead and look for more. And again, uh, rational root theorem. I just couldn't remember for a second what it is. RRT could help. Look at factors of eight or negative eight. We already exhausted negative one and one didn't work, so maybe go to two and then try negative two, and then try four and negative four, so on and so forth. But to keep a long story short, I'm gonna tell you what it is. B equals two works, and if B is equal to two, then A is equal to one. Maybe if you started with one, this would work better, but again, uh, it, it could be problematic too. Anyways, so are those the only solutions? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. That's why we have the second method, right? Great. So. Oh, by the way, the first method is not even complete because I only found the values of a, b. And what does that mean? Let's go ahead and check it out. We said that our equations could be factored into these, where, where is that? Okay, here we go. These two, thi two things, right? So let's go ahead and see what happens with the values we just found, right? a and b. Okay, what are the values? Do you remember? Well, one of them was negative one, negative one. So hopefully you'll remember this. Uh, if a and b are both negative 1, then you're going to get something like this. And the other factor, of course, is going to be x squared plus x. And then um, b is negative 1, so that's going to create a positive 2. Great. Just save that factoring. And you can always check that this is true. And the other solution just switches these around. So it's basically the same thing. Makes sense? So this is the only way to factor it. But wait a minute. Based on this, how can I find the numerical value for x squared minus x? Easy. By setting this equal to zero, you get, because if this is zero, then this is probably zero, right? Provided that this is not zero. Wait a minute. This can't be zero. Why? Because if x is real, this is always positive. 
discriminant less than zero, delta saves the day. So if this is zero, this must be zero. That's a must. You see that? So this implies that x squared minus x is equal to one, which is what we were looking for. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method because I think the second method is really, really cool. Hopefully you're gonna like it. And again, you get to decide, just let me know what you think. So we're given this and we're supposed to evaluate this. Again, numerically, right? Okay, how do you do that? Well, if this is a numerical value, I don't know what it is, why not call it k for constant? Wait, do you spell k with a constant? No, but you can use k as a constant or, or c, doesn't matter. Now, this gives us what? This gives us something to work with. Isolate x squared and square both sides. Are you sure about that? Uh, maybe. Let's do it because I want to get to x to the fourth, right? So let's do it. It gives us x to the fourth equals x squared plus 2kx plus k squared. Beautiful. Because from here, I can replace x squared with x plus k again, which gives me a numerical value. Well, not a numerical value, but something nice. Okay, you'll see in a little bit. Now replace x squared with x plus k. x to the fourth equals x squared, which is x plus k plus 2kx plus k squared. And this means x to the fourth equals 2k plus 1x, this and this, plus k squared plus k. But wait a minute, our original equation gave us something like that. 3x plus 2. So if this is 3x plus 2, and if it, this is true, then this must be a 3, and this must be a 2. Can that happen at the same time, those two things? Yes. If k is equal to 1, then we're good. But what is k? k is what you're looking for. Did you forget? Come on. x squared minus x is equal to k. So x squared minus x is equal to 1. And this is what you're looking for. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out membership options. You can click join button to join. And also make sure to check A plus BI and bye-bye.